Coming up on Elon Phoenix Weekly. We look ahead to the inaugural season of basketball in the Shaw Center. Sit down with one of the greats from Elon's Grid Iron. And learn about a new program that helps mentor young women as they begin their careers in sport management. All that and more, next on Elon Phoenix Weekly. Good morning, and welcome to Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Talia Lundquist. And I'm Madeline Kern. Thank you for joining us for this ESPN Local Sports Break. We have a wonderful show for you today, featuring stories aimed to delve deeper into the rich history of Elon Athletics, including one of our all-time greats joining the Elon Hall of Fame. And we meet a member of Elon Wins, Women Influencers in Sport, a new program that helps mentor young women at Elon hoping to get into career in sports. And we look ahead to the Elon basketball teams who are getting ready to set to take to the hardwood for their first exciting season in the Shar Center. Elon football is having a wonderful season and the future looks bright. This year, Elon Athletics inducted three new members to their Elon Hall of Fame, including one of football's all-time greats, when Terrell Hudgens finished his Elon career, he held 19 records for the NCAA, Southern Conference, or Elon. When he finished his final game at Elon, Hudgens was the all-time NCAA leader in career receiving yards, ahead of another receiver you may have heard of, Jerry Rice. But as Terrell told Elon Phoenix Weekly, when he first went to college to play football, he almost wasn't a receiver at all. When the ECU first, which Elon offered me first in the ECU, I was an athlete. They brought me in as an athlete, moved me to linebacker the first day. Tried it for a week, um, decided I'd rather play offense somewhere else. And uh, my head coach called Elon. Elon said they would give me a full ride, so came here a week later. When he arrived at Elon, Hudgens would become close friends with quarterback Scott Riddle. The two would make a bond not only on, but off the field. Scott was great. Um, I mean, we didn't even have to say words, and we just knew what the other guy was going to do and made things happen. So uh, Scott, best quarterback to ever play here. After life at Elon, Terrell Hutchins became a high school football coach. And after gaining more knowledge on coaching, Hutchins explains how he would coach himself. I would let myself have a good time. Uh, the coaches here, when I play here, they, they try and keep me bottled up at first and then they realize that was just part of my personality and part of my game was to just let me be me. So um, in the same way, you still, you know, shut your mouth at times, but uh, I'm not sure I could coach myself. Uh, I'm a little, a little tough to handle. Hudgens is proud of his alma mater and reflects on how Elon has made him into the man he is today. A kid, pretty much, 18 year old kid. And I like to say that I'm much more mature, um, have a degree in sport management and um, some great friends out of it, which is more important to me is the friends I've made. Elon's done, done great for me. Hudgens finished his career with 10 NCAA records, including most receptions and receiving yards. In addition, Hudgens was a first team All-American three times and in his senior season, he was the runner-up for the Walter Payton Award, the FCS version of the Heisman Trophy. And to sum up his importance to Elon football, his number 19 jersey is one of the five retired jerseys that hang on the wall of Rhodes Stadium. In conjunction with the Sport Management Department in the School of Communications, Women Influencers in Sport, or WINS, is a new initiative that offers regular programming to encourage the development and education of female students studying sport management. Through the program and its mentorship, female students gain the skills, knowledge, networks, and confidence necessary to establish themselves in what is currently an overwhelmingly male-dominated industry. One of the mentors, Monica Austin, is a 2018 graduate of Elon who now works with the Philadelphia Phillies and is eager to share her passion for sports and to provide guidance to the next generation of Elon students into the sports industry.
I work for the Philadelphia Phillies. I am in the season and group ticket sales office. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I interact with clients from uh, both the group and season side. So I deal with our full season clients, partial season clients, and anybody buying a group of 25 people or more. Women can have any opportunity in sport that they want, in my mind. Um, personally, I'm in sales, but I know women in the Phillies who are in marketing, um, they are in even the baseball analytic development side of it. Uh, so the, really the sky is the limit and whatever you set your mind to, I really think that you can do and the opportunities are out there. I had a mentor, uh, she's actually even in the WIND program and she really helped me out and I wouldn't be where I am today without her. Uh, she showed me that not only being a woman in the sport, it's possible to, in industry, to make it work, but there's so many opportunities out there and it doesn't matter if you're male, female, um, if you're good at your job, that's all that it matters. Um, and there's, the opportunities are out there and if you push yourself, you're gonna be able to get to where you wanna be. If I was still in school, I would probably take advantage of the people around me more. I would take advantage of not only my professors and the you know adults around me, but the colleagues around me. So I would talk to more of my peers and some people in my classes and probably just try to create as many connections as possible. It really is about the connections you make. That's what's going to help you get to the next step. Uh, you know, people like to talk about what they do, so I would connect with more people, whether it's LinkedIn um, or just in person at, at Elon. I would probably just start talking to more people and just seeing what they've done, how they got to where they are, and just trying to connect and make as many connections as possible. Earlier in the show, we mentioned that Terrell Hudgens is one of five retired jerseys for the football team. Can you name the other four? We'll have the answer later in the show. We have a lot left on this edition of Elon Phoenix Weekly, including a look back on the soccer pitch and a look ahead to the hoop season. Stay with us. driving course since my freshman year and I couldn't be more excited. We grind early in the morning and in the heat of the day. We have the work ethic. Every day, we set our sights higher, staying focused on what's next. We have the momentum. Together, we are on the rise. Welcome back to Elon Phoenix Weekly on your ESPN2 local sports break. Elon men's soccer has had an interesting season with a talented team led by coach Mark Reeves. Elon was coming off a 2017 season that saw them win seven matches and earn a berth in the CAA playoffs. This year, the early season featured a three-game win streak, punctuated by an 8-1 drubbing of Rutgers. Since that three-game winning streak, the team has shown great effort and been in most of their matches. And Coach Reeves says the experiences helped them grow together as a team. From the pitch to the volleyball court, 
where coach Mary Tendler has the Phoenix riding a four-game winning streak as they have set their sights on finishing the season strong. For senior Matty Jadon, the week also included a Conference Defensive Player of the Week award. In three games last week, Jadon had 73 digs, 11 assists, four service aces, and one kill in wins over NC Central, UNCW, and Delaware. During the undefeated week, Jadon also topped 1,800 assists for her career, which is good for third all-time in Elon history. A great week for volleyball and a great season so far for Elon football, which is facing a little bit of adversity as they head into the home stretch of their season. For more on the challenges they have faced, Emmanuel Tobe breaks down the year so far. What an exciting season it has been for the Elon Phoenix football team. The team started with a rough defeat to Southern Florida, who scored 31 straight unanswered points and defeated Elon 34-14. Second-string quarterback Jalen Green did have a nice 12-yard run for a touchdown after he replaced Davis Cheek in the third quarter of that game. The team would then have an impressive victory against Furman, in which the team would have 275 rushing yards and four touchdowns in their home opener. The team would then add an away victory against the Charleston Southern Buccaneers and a 30-9 home victory against New Hampshire to their record before they would face conference heavyweights James Madison. Elon would upset the FCS number two ranked James Madison 27 to 24 off of Davis Cheek's 15 yard touchdown pass to Avery Jones with a minute and 17 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Elon closed as 37.5 point underdogs making the Phoenix victory the third biggest Vegas upset ever. The victory was also James Madison's first loss to a conference opponent since October 31st 2015. In week six, the Phoenix picked up their second loss against Delaware after Davis Cheek left the game with an injury in the first quarter. On October 16th, it was announced that Davis Cheek would miss the rest of the season with a torn ACL. Before the injury, Cheek completed over 60% of his passes for 1,018 yards and four touchdowns. In Jalen Green's first career start, he had 200 yards and two touchdowns as Elon picked up the much needed victory and is now currently sitting at a 5-2 record after defeating Richmond. During their break, during their bye week, thanks to Elon's titanic win at James Madison, the Phoenix still have a great shot at making the playoffs. The team has two back-to-back -back home games against Rhode Island and Towson and ends the season at Maine. The Elon football team still boasts a great running game, leading the CEA in touchdowns and being second in yards and yards per game. Passing, the team has struggled statistically, scoring for six touchdowns, tied for the lowest in the conference. On the other side of the ball, the Phoenix have a defense that gives up only 21.7 yards per game, which is the third lowest in the CEA. Will Elon be able to continue its strong defensive play and be more productive on offense behind Green? These questions will be answered on the field, but I'm headed to the locker room. Thank you, Emmanuel. Elon has the weekend off before welcoming Rhode Island into town for the homecoming game. Currently, Elon sits at number six in the FCS coaches poll and number eight in the media poll. Should be a great end to the football season and hopefully an exciting run in the playoffs when we return a new episode of The Spark and an inside look at the Elon football team. And we take a look at the upcoming seasons of both basketball teams when we return. grind early in the morning and in the heat of the day. We have the work ethic. Every day, we set our sights higher, staying focused on what's next. We have the momentum. Together, we are on the rise.
Dad? What happened? You were hurt, son. Real bad. I, I can't feel my legs. We're lucky to have you be alive. God bless Jesus and the Virgin Mary for that. But Jimbo, tell him, nurse. My legs. You should be up and healthy after a few months of physical therapy. But you'll never play football again. Okay, that's fine. My son will play football again. There has to be another way. <laughs> You've broken him. It's, it's fine, really. He's just a simple all-American boy. Football was all he had. Dad, it, it's really fine. He had his eyes set on college ball. The scouts were eyeing him already. D I'm the president of the theater club. I, what are you talking all about? All your hopes and dreams gone because of a stupid accident. Nurse, I want him transferred. I've never even touched a football in my life. Nurse, do you hear him? Crazy talk. My son's talking crazy talk. D I get it. You peaked in high school. You bet I did. Those were the best five years of my life. I'm just trying to give you the same. I, I don't have to be the same as you. If only your mom were here. She didn't know what to say. Uh, Hi, Mom. Those third floor bathrooms? Atrocious. We were having a moment, Marlene. It's like I don't even know who I'm talking to. My son doesn't like football. That's right. Well, I guess football's like life, right? I don't know. Hey, football's even like theater. You still try and score points. No. <laughs> also played on a 120-yard field. No, that's still football. Damn it! <laughs> well, maybe that's okay. Football's just about hard work. I do work hard in school. You do work hard. Getting good grades and knowing how to read and all that. Wait, Dad, do you not know how to read? <laughs> We're a proud family, and I'm proud of you. Football or no football, you're still scoring touchdowns in my book. Thanks, Dad. You know how to look ahead. Play audibles when you need to. Yeah. Set up the ISO. Run through the one-two for big gains. Set up the play action. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> how about after all this, we throw the ball around in the backyard like old times. Ah, oh, you really mean it? Yeah. I love you, Jimbo. <laughs> Why don't we get you out of this dump and go for some Hooters? My treat. <laughs> sure thing. I'll get the start car started. <clears throat> Why don't you get your ass out of here? Thanks, nurse. <laughs> I still can't move my legs. <sighs> Never mind. Elon Phoenix Weekly is made possible by the students of the School of Communications in association with the dedicated coaches, athletes, and staff of Elon Athletics. Earlier in the show, we heard from Terrell Hudgens about his induction into Elon's Hall of Fame. Hudgens is one of five retired jerseys that hang in Rhodes Stadium. We asked you earlier a trivia question about the other four inductees. Who are the other four people? Scott Riddle, Willie Tart, Bobby Hedrick, and Richard McGeorge all have their numbers retired for Elon football. As we mentioned earlier in the show, Elon football is back in the top 10 of the national rankings, and a big reason is the team's ability to overcome injuries and challenges. Two players that embody this spirit are the Whitehead brothers, who have overcome inju injuries and adversity to remain key parts of the success of the Phoenix. Going into Charleston Southern, I mean, we played a lot of triple option teams before, so, you know, we kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into. And we had a game plan of, you know, really just assignment football. You know, one person has the QB, one person has the running back, and it's really just about making tackles. At the beginning of the game, you know, we kind of struggle a little bit.
coach told us that, you know, we're a good football team. We can beat these guys. All we got to do is do everything that we worked on in practice. We got back to that, got focused, locked in, and good things happen. Coming back like that, it shows that we have a lot of resilience. It shows that, you know, we're not just going to give up when times get tough, you know. So I think that was really good to see from our defense. Just to see the adversity and how we handled it, you know, it was a good thing to see because, you know, it's not going to be a walk in the park in the CAA. Good job, man. Great job. Okay, we come back in the second half the way we did. All right? The lesson here is pretty simple. You gotta always have an edge when you go out there and play. Because if you don't, you end up at halftime like we did. And we came out and played with poise and effort in the second half. Hey, seven round three, seven round three, one, two, three. Hey! hey. 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 They've had to be they've had to be fighters. They they were born premature. Um, things were a little scary. Be sighing. Be sighing. Yeah, you just and one month early. They've been together since day one. They've been teammates. They've been roommates. Um, and they, they really pretty much, they do get along, thank God, because they're together a lot. We didn't bicker a lot as kids. We were each other's best friends. I guess that transitioned into football. We worked well together. You know, he was my offensive lineman when I was a running back. He was my defensive lineman when I was a linebacker. When they were in high school and being recruited, the schools that were looking at them, most of them were CAA, and they would have played against each other. So, you know, when Elon came along, it was just, it's the perfect fit. Well, things got off to kind of a rough start for both of them. We tore our left labrums. I tore mine the third day of camp. He tore his, like, the first scrimmage. And the nurses were just confused because they looked on the board and they had just brought Eric back. And, they said, well, that's Eric Whitehead, born 12, 17, 96. But there's a R Whitehead in the operating room, born 12, 17, 96, with the same injury. And, you know, they just kind of looked at us and we're like, we said, yeah, they do everything together. It's kind of like I just grew up with my best friend my entire life. I didn't realize how important a brother was until college. You know, my people struggle to find friends, but, you know, I always had a friend and a roommate all all four years here, so it was just nice, you know, going through all the time, difficult times you go through in college, just having that one person by your side. I get asked a lot if it's weird that we play in college together, but it really, since we've always done it, we've always played together, so it's really, it just feels like the, like the norm. UNAs, they've been a really good football team. You know, they made the playoffs, I think, for the past 14 years. So, you know, we knew we were going to have to do our job. You know, we got back to our bread and butter plays and we just executed. On the goal line sack, uh, we, we were running the play, so I was blitzing the B-gap. And you know, the guard, he, he came on me. I ended up slipping off of him and um, kind of able to push him outside, and then Willoughby was able to get the sack. So, you know, it was good teamwork, you know, good effort on both, both guys there. Just having these coaches come in here and and show us and teach us new things, new techniques. It's great. It feels good to be able to win games.
they started off as preferred walk-ons, as my husband, husband mentioned. Um, they worked really hard. They were here all year long. They, they came in the summer. They did whatever the scholarship players were doing. They were here. They did classes. They did workouts. But this is what they really wanted to do. So last year, Coach Signetti called them both in, and they were awarded scholarships. So the scholarship that I was awarded was the uh, Mark Foley scholarship. And he was also a former walk-on at Elam, who then earned a scholarship. He, when he, uh, he passed away, his friends and family decided to start a scholarship in his name for those players who went through a similar situation, who was a walk-on, then awarded a scholarship. And I got the opportunity to meet Mr. Foley this past week after UNH. And he was just telling me all these great stories about him, uh, how he was just a hard player. He loved the sport, loved his teammates, and they wanted to make sure that his legacy lived on. And I feel like it's my duty now to make sure that his legacy lives on so that the next person who's awarded the scholarship can continue that and that his name is never forgotten. And going through scout team, it's a lot, it's rough, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of just getting killed by the, the first teamers is not very fun, but you know, just, we both worked so hard for this, you know, we played football together since we were freshmen in high school, so just getting it the same day just meant a lot. It's one of the proudest moments, um, and they did it, it was all, it was all them. I mean, this was all their hard work, and they love this team, they love this school, um, they love this game. Elon has won five of their last six games, and the CAA is proving to be a very competitive conference with six other teams ranked in the top 25 of the SCS polls. The basketball season is right around the corner, with the women opening the Shar Center against North Carolina on November 6th, and the men start their season against Manhattan on the road on November 6th. Both teams are looking to grow from their success last season. For the women's team, the last two seasons have been huge successes for Charlotte Smith, including back-to-back -back CAA titles and last year, their second trip to the NCAA tournament. In the CAA preseason poll, the Phoenix are picked to finish third. They have three returning starters from last year, including sophomore Sadia Munford, who was selected to the CAA preseason all-conference team, earning a place on the second team. For the men's team, Tyler Sebring will lead the way. He was selected to the second team of the preseason CAA All-Conference team for Matt Matheny. In his 10th season, Coach Matheny is looking to Sebring and two other returning starters, Day Nin Swoop and Steven Santa Ana, to lead the Phoenix in their fifth year in the CAA. The first men's game in the Shar Center will be nationally televised against the North Carolina Tar Heels. While a huge challenge for the Phoenix, it's a great way to kick off a new era of Elon basketball. If you missed anything or want to watch it again, be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. You can also catch us on Spectrum Cable to watch us on demand. Head to elonphoenix.com to learn more about upcoming games and exciting successes for Elon Athletics. And don't forget to tune in next time when we return for another exciting edition of Elon Phoenix Weekly. On behalf of our producers and crew here at the show, we hope you have a great weekend. For Elon Phoenix Weekly, I'm Tellier Lundquist. And I'm Madeline Kern. Roll Phoenix.